Hello everyone, your pal 6 Speed Dakota here. Just in case you forgot what I look like, and there's my beautiful fiance sitting there. We're in beautiful Baker Lake, Washington in this picture. And you can see my boat, the glass bar in the background. Anyway, not to bore you at all, but uh, my wedding is in, what, four days now? I don't even know anymore. Things are just so crazy. I just don't have time to edit a proper repair video. So we're going to nerd out a little bit today and talk about something a little bit different. We are going to talk about torque to yield fasteners. And this is a nuts and bolts approach to it. Pun intended. Anyhow, we are going to learn about what a torque to yield fastener is. How does a fastener work? the metal science or material science and metallurgy behind it. We're going to talk about material deformation, material strength, and material properties, and the physics behind torque to yield fasteners. So what is a torque to yield fastener? The definition is a fastener that is tightened until it is permanently deformed. It can be used only once and must be replaced after being removed. It provides a much larger clamping force for the same size of fastener as a standard bolt. And it requires a torque specification, then a certain rotational angle. Generally, it's 90 degrees. Some require another turn of 90 degrees. So how does a fastener work? So my crude little Microsoft Paint drawing you're going to have to deal with. Obviously, the big blue thing is a bolt and the cylinder head and block are clearly labeled. So let's assume for just argument's sake that the cylinder head is rigid. It does not move. It does not deform because it is such a large and thick piece of metal that uh, the amount of deformation that occurs when you tighten a bolt or put any kind of force to it is essentially negligible. It doesn't exist. So when you provide, a, when you produce a torque on a fastener and the threads dig further into the engine block, you are actually elongating the bolt. That stretch is what applies the clamping force to the cylinder head. So in order to understand this, we have to know what yield strength is. So I'm going to start by asking you a question. Which is stronger? We have a half inch grade 5 bolt and we have a 1 inch grade 5 bolt. Well, duh, the answer obviously is the 1 inch bolt. Well, that's actually not quite correct. The 1 inch bolt can take more load, but since they're made of the same material, they actually have the same yield strength. They actually have the same strength altogether, same properties, because again, it's the same material. Now, stress or material stress is equal to the force divided by the area. Since the material's yield strength remains the same, a larger area means that more force can be applied. Thus, a 1-inch bolt can take more load than a half-inch bolt because, again, the area is at the bottom of the fraction. Bigger area, less stress. Now, answer this one, which is stronger. We have a half-inch grade 5 bolt, and now we have a half-inch grade 8 bolt. Well, now the answer is a little bit more obvious that the grade 8 bolt is stronger because the material is an alloy with a higher yield strength. So the yield strength is the property of a material. It's actually a property of the metal alloy itself. So the yield strength is the point or the yield stress is the point where the internal stress on a material results in permanent or plastic deformation. When you surpass the yield strength, you've permanently deformed the fastener and there's no going back. And this is not to be confused with the ultimate strength which is basically the amount of stress that you produce on a fastener before the failure occurs. Now, what is deformation? When you tighten a bolt, the bolt elongates. This provides your clamping force. When you remove the bolt, assuming that you didn't stretch it beyond the yield strength, the bolt returns to its normal length, like nothing ever happened to it. This is called elastic deformation. Elastic deformation is reversible and non-permanent. You can essentially do this as many times as you possibly want, and it won't do anything. It always returns back to normal, again, as long as you don't exceed the yield strength. Plastic deformation occurs when you exceed the yield strength of a material. Plastic deformation is permanent, and the fastener will no longer return to its original length. 
Plastic deformation increases the strength of a material by cold work. Now this I will explain a little bit further when we get on to the stress strain curve. So cold work is the slippage and movement of the material grains when the material is being stretched and deformed plastically. Now, stress versus strain. Strain is the ratio of the elongation of the fastener or the whatever material to the original length. So it's basically the change in length divided by the original length. It is a unitless number. When elastically deforming the material, there is a direct correlation. This is called the Young's modulus of elasticity. The modulus of elasticity, denoted by E, is the stress divided by the strain. Young's modulus remains essentially remains constant between metal alloys. So grade 8 bolt and a grade 5 bolt are going to have the same Young's modulus, essentially. It may vary ever so slightly between materials because especially with alloys, you're adding different materials. But for the sake of argument's sake, and even in engineering practice, it's considered to be relatively constant. So in this case, steel is about 30 times 10 to the 6 or 30 million PSI. And aluminum has a Young's modulus of 10.2 times 10 to the 6 or 10.2 million PSI. Now, the Young's modulus is not the material strength, and it's only valid when the material is deformed elastically. The relationship between the stress in the material and the elongation due to stress is what the Young's modulus is. It's essentially the stiffness of the material. It actually does not change between alloys of the same material. It's relatively constant, once again, to reiterate that point. So this is called the stress strain curve. Now this is just a generic one. There's no unit, so obviously it's this is of, of a ductile material, which is basically what we're dealing with. We're not dealing with anything ceramic or anything that's brittle. So this point here is called the yield strength. <coughs> Excuse me. Beyond that point is where the material becomes permanently deformed. The ultimate strength is when you've basically gone too far and you're any further you're resulting in imminent failure which at this point is the fracture now you may have noticed something called necking now it ain't kissing it's when the material slims down under the stress so if we go back here most people have that have broken a bolt have realized this exact nature because as you're twisting a bolt and you're tightening it tightening it tighter and tighter or trying to loosen it and for that split quarter of a second all of a sudden it becomes easy to turn before it snaps that's when you exceeded the ultimate tensile strength and you're heading towards fracture so why do we need to turn the fastener a precise rotation after being torqued well, you got to remember in the elastic region, assuming that the bolt diameter stays relatively constant, and in the elastic region it does. It doesn't change by a significant amount. The clamping force produced by the bolt is directly correlated to the torque applied since the fastener stretch compared to the force created is a linear relationship. As we can see right here, the slope of the line in the elastic region before the yield strength is completely constant. Now, in the plastic region, the deformation is permanent, and thus a torque value is no longer accurate. So now we're somewhere between the yield strength and the ultimate strength, which is right where we want to end up. If we get too close to the ultimate strength, we're probably going to end up with a bolt failure, and too close to the yield strength, we're not going to get enough clamping force. So, applied torque to the fastener is obviously only accurate in the elastic region. So, we know the properties of the material, so we can actually use the pitch of the bolt threads to accurately elongate the bolt by rotating it a certain degree. So let's take this for example. We have a standard quarter 20 UNC bolt, which is 20 threads per inch, so you essentially need 20 rotations for one inch of thread travel. So one rotation, which is a 20th of an inch, is about 50 thousandths, or 50 thou. And a finer pitch will actually give you less travel per rotation, so giving you a little bit more precise control over how much elongation we get. 
So by knowing the exact amount of deformation produced by the bolt, we can accurately know what the clamping force created by the bolt is. So the extra 90 degrees or so of rotation, which is probably the most common uh, when doing a torque to yield fastener, it stretches the bolt past its yield point to provide that strong and accurate clamping force required to hold the cylinder head in place. And that's the end of it. That's how torque to yield fasteners work. Now you can go out and show all your friends your newfound knowledge. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I'll be doing more of my auto repair stuff and uh, more work to come on the glass par. I've just been kind of using it lately, just kind of enjoying it for the remainder of the of the season. I'll be winterizing it after we come back from the honeymoon. And uh, the rest of the videos will start coming back when I get back from Mexico. Um, so yeah, you can follow me at the usual places, Facebook, Twitter, Google+, and always here on YouTube. I hope you enjoyed this video, and thank you all so much for watching. Take it easy, everybody.